We learned the other day that Mike Gill had succumbed to his injuries from the carjacking uh, that took place recently. This is now garnering national attention. The former Speaker of the House, Newt Gingrich, tweeting, this is an example of why Congress needs to take back control of our national capital. The former president in Las Vegas last week vowed to, quote, take over our horribly run capital. Mayor, you seem to have made progress with House Republicans recently, especially in light of the new criminal bill. Could this be a setback? And is there a real possibility of a threat from House Republicans now to no. roll back district uh, I, jurisdiction? Let me just get get to your question. We know that we are in an election year, a pivotal election year. Uh, it looks like we know who the, the candidates for president are going to be, and this won't be the first time that they try to attack American cities. Uh, and I feel uh, like, uh, you know, a real bitter taste in my mouth when a person's uh, and a family's tragedy is being exploited for that reason. Um, let me just say uh, that I had the honor of appointing uh, Mike to serve on a very important board in the District of Columbia, one that helps us run elections. Uh, he served with distinction. Uh, and his this tragedy, and let me also characterize it the right way, because I don't think MPD has characterized it as a carjacking. Um, but what we know, it appears, is that we had a very sick individual with a gun with a death wish. And he rolled through Washington, D.C. on that death wish. And two Washingtonians were killed. Can I just follow up on the former president's comments specifically? You know, a few of the, it, it looks like, as you said, that D.C. will now be a part of the national conversation through the presidential campaign. Former President Trump pointed to graffiti and garbage, which he's done before. He pointed to homeless encampments, and he said people come to Washington, D.C. to see the Lincoln Memorial, and they go home in a casket. And, and you just talked about the incorrect perception about downtown, uh, about people coming down here. What about now this national conversation that may or may not be the correct perception of the nation's capital and, and our hometown, but it, it, it's what's being perceived out across the country? I don't know that I would agree with that as the what's being perceived around the country. I know that's what the president and others who are interested in attacking American cities will promote. Uh, and again, I think it's kind of disgusting to use um, this person's death um, in that way, and we won't, we won't engage in it. Mayor, I wanted to ask about the nomination of Joel Kasten. The council's expected to uh, consider tomorrow. I don't know how close you're following that. He spent 27 years behind bars. Uh, for murder, uh, and the U.S. attorney has argued against his nomination, calling his integrity into question, saying he'd be an advocate for lesser sentences or softer on crime. Uh, the council chairman has supported his nomination and said the commission will benefit from his perspective. Where do you stand on his appointment? Um, I haven't weighed in on uh, his appointment. I think that's a council nominee. Um, and where we have, we've worked with the council to try to have more people with law enforcement experience on the sentencing commission. I think there's long been a belief that the kind of the ideological viewpoints of a lot of previous commissioners have been towards non-accountability. Um, and so I would encourage the council to focus on people uh, who want justice in our city for violent crime. And I, I would tend, not knowing a lot about this nominee, I would tend to associate myself with the U.S. Attorney on this one. Yes. The Metro Board seems to be leaning toward uh, fair increases, not toward uh, service disruptions or reductions, uh, but somewhere around a 12% fare increase that could take effect as early as this summer. Your thoughts on that? Um, I sent a Metro a letter, I think you probably know, that indicated uh, how the district would approach what I th consider an anomalous year post-pandemic, the resetting of some of the baseline budgets, 
and what represents what all jurisdictions and increased commitment by all jurisdictions. Um, but I do think Metro has to look at its own operations to get those in line. It's done some hard work with that this year uh, and that they bring to the board a balanced approach, more from us, more from them, um, and a, a focus on, you know, what's fair for riders. Yes. Hey, Mayor. Caroline Patricus, thank you so much. Um, regarding this crime bill that the council is expected to vote on tomorrow, um, do you think more severe penalties um, and longer sentencing will actually prevent crime when it's being committed by youth who don't know the law in the first place? Um, I think that there is a lot that we need to do to reset our public safety ecosystem. One of you guys told me you were tired of hearing about it, but I'm going to say it anyway. Uh, there is not one bill that's going to rebalance the ecosystem that's been disrupted for the last eight years. Um, so I would encourage you uh, to take a look at a graphic that I produced that is a real kind of hard look at some things that we think need to be rebalanced. Uh, I think there are some things in this bill that help us get there. They include part of my Act Now um, bill that we advanced, as well as the Safer Stronger 2.0, um, some, some things in there. I believe firmly that we have to deal um, consistently with gun offenses in this city, which we don't. There has to be accountability for gun offenses. We have to address emerging crime trends, and we have to have a system that supports our ability to recruit the best of the best in police officers. Uh, and we don't have that right now. So I hope that the council doesn't retreat on um, rolling back what I call recruitment killers that re keep us from attracting the best and brightest police officers. Thank you, everybody.